Joseph Bell was born in the small village of Farlham in the county of Cumberland, England, in March of 1861. He attended a private elementary school there, but after his mother died when Joseph was just seven years old, the family moved to nearby Carlisle. When Joseph was 15 years old, he apprenticed at Stevenson and Company as an engine fitter. By 1885, Joseph signed on to the White Star Line. He would work for the shipping company for the rest of his life, having served on some 18 ships, beginning with the Oceanic and ending with the Titanic. In 1891, when Joseph was 30 years old, he was promoted to chief engineer on the Coptic. Two years later, he met and married Maud Bates. The couple would have four children between the years 1896 and 1908. By that time, they were living in Belfast, Ireland. In 1911, Joseph was serving as chief engineer of the RMS Olympic, and in early 1912, he was transferred to the same position on the newest liner, the RMS Titanic. Bell was head of the engine department, which consisted of 325 men. The engineers had their own smoking room and private promenade area, and Bell was the only other crew member other than the captain to have his own bathroom. His cabin was on F deck. Bell was on duty on the night of April 14, 1912, when at approximately 11.40 p.m., a bell rang out from the bridge in the boiler rooms to stop all engines. Hardly any time passed when the collision with the iceberg occurred. Water began pouring into the boiler compartments. The crew sprang into action, dampening the boilers and starting the water pumps. During the resulting inspection of the ship, Bell met up briefly with the managing director of the White Star Line, Bruce Ismay. Ismay asked him if the ship was damaged, and Bell replied that it was, but he was hopeful that the pumps would keep up with the water flow. Unfortunately, that assessment turned out to be false. Most of the engineering crew down below stayed at their stations for most of the ensuing two hours, trying to keep power on to the rest of the ship. It was their efforts that allowed Jack Phillips and Harold Bride, the two wireless Marconi operators, to keep sending the SOS messages that would ultimately end up saving just over 700 passengers. Very late in the sinking, around 1.50 a.m., witnesses testified that they saw a group of engineers arrive on the boat deck to take their chances of escaping. However, by that time, almost all of the boats had departed, and none of the engineers were saved. In his autobiographical book about the tragedy, 2nd Officer Charles Lightoller says that he saw Bell at the railing on deck just before the ship foundered. This was reportedly the last sighting of the chief engineer. Joseph Bell died in the sinking. His body was never found. He was 51 years old. The old family homestead in Farlam, which had been owned by Joseph after his father's death, was left to his wife Maud and one of Joseph's brothers. Since nobody in the family lived there anymore, they sold the land shortly thereafter. A memorial headstone was placed in the family grave in Farlam in honor of Joseph Bell. Thanks for watching Profiles from the Titanic.